to cheer y'all up about the state of politics in this great nation. I know you think that uh, it is looking dark and gloomy. Cheer up, it could always be worse. You could be living in Texas. I bring to you our own Molly Ivins. Molly Ivins appeared in papers all over the country. How many legendary print journalists are there? I'm a Texan. I drive a pickup truck. I drink beer. I hug. I'm a liberal. So what? Molly came in like a house of fire, making riotous fun of the legislature. Representative so-and-so has the IQ of an adolescent piss ass. I see him in the Capitol the next day, and they say, baby, you put my name in your paper. I accidentally became an authority on George W. Bush. Like the guy who climbed Everest, it was there. The people who Molly took apart were the right people to aim at, and they knew it. What's your take on you? The draft-dodging, dope-smoking, deadbeat dad who divorced his dying wife. Molly could be very rough on progressives. In my opinion, the Democratic leadership is gutless to an extraordinary extent. I had been asked to join the New York Times. They wanted Molly for the unique voice, the iconoclast, but they wanted her to fit into the times. As we say in Texas, that dog don't hunt. Damn, it's good to be back home again. Porn can make a difference in Texas. What the hell they need with one more liberal in Berkeley, California, for God's sake. Texas has always been the national laboratory for bad government. Major daily publications were buying her column and not running it. You bet their censorship. Anytime you do the kind of work Molly did, there's a price to pay for it. Molly got death threats, threatening letters. I think of you as a hateful, lying left liberal. We keep pretending that the political spectrum runs from right to left. It doesn't. It runs from top to bottom. It's not those people in Washington. It's not those people in your state capital. This country is run by us. Somebody has got to look them in the eye and speak truth. And she did. So that was an amazing film. Thank you. What I'd like to know is... What inspired you to make this film? Uh, my friend is Allison Engel, and she and her sister wrote the play on Molly Ivins, and uh, I, I had to go because she went to see my film, so I had to go see her play, and I'd never heard of Molly Ivins, and I, was, I literally cried and laughed, and I was so inspired by Molly, and I said, if I don't know about Molly, how many people are out there like this? And so I, I decided I'm gonna make a documentary, and so we took off, and. Put, their, uh, put everything on our credit card, and Janice and Carlisle went out to Texas, and we started interviewing people, and that's how it happened. That was seven years ago. And it's mostly women. Mostly women, yeah. I have an amazing crew of women, uh, Janice and Carlisle, of course, but we have an, uh, uh, Monique Sabatoski, who's this brilliant editor, and then we had Monique and Janice write it, and then we have our archivist with Amber Howell, and. Gerald and and our camera woman Christy Tully and uh, so it's a also I think Molly would be impressed that you know we have these extraordinary women making the story about an extraordinary woman I think it's only appropriate and I guess I'm an honorary person here. <laughs> so what do you feel the relevance of the film and Molly is to present day because so much of what she said was really prophetic right I think Molly is is really important today. I think more, I don't say more important than, than when she was alive, but because of the polarity of politics and, and uh, the, uh, the, in, the inability to tell the truth, let's put it that way, when she was so powerful at telling the truth, but she said it in a funny way. And I think that's something we could really uh, a benefit from right now because she just didn't, you know, make fun of the right or the left. She made fun of corrupt people. She made fun of people who were screwing the people. And that's what, you know, that's what we need right now. Someone who can make fun of them in a way that makes us laugh, but also see the truth and the horror of the situation that we're in right now. And I know Molly is Twitter ready. Like, I, my favorite line about Molly, which could be very applied today, is that if you put his brain into, brain into a bumblebee, he would fly backwards. And I can think of a lot of politicians nowadays that that would apply to. So uh, I think that's where she's relevant, you know. And I also, I think that when she said, you know, who are we going to blame for all this? And then she made that big statement in the film, illegal aliens, you know. 
you know, she talks about, you know, when we blame so many people or so many of things outside of ourselves for, for what's going on in America and why things are going wrong, and then decide to make us less free, you know, we're basically less free. And I think that's what's going on right now. Our civil rights are being attacked. Our ability to speak up is being attacked. And all those who do speak up are, are made to feel like they're, they're less patriot than those who, who in, uh, take in all the lies that we're being fed right now. So I think Molly would, would, could have cut through all the lies and, and help us all cut through those lies. But in a funny way, right? We gotta laugh about it. For all you people who would like a good laugh and really want to have a good time and also Molly would say, Molly, I would say, you know, the greatest form of free entertainment is politics. And I think we, we could really use Molly's voice now to help us to see the entertainment about politics. This film is playing in 88 theaters across the country where our, our profits go to the ACLU and to the Texas Observer. And if you get out there and you see this film, you're going to have some fun, I promise you. So raise hell. Damn, it's good to be back home again.